does my hair look? Debatable. <laughs> There's been a lot of moving. And you're so, trying to mush them all yeah. under the boxes yeah. and they won't all mush. Um. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have the dough. Yeah, we're getting talented. I know. Oh my God. Throw away the paper and be done. Know that you are loved uh, and uh, you can do this and you're not doing this alone. Hope you have a good day. Hey everyone, this is Ray with Crazy Calling. Thank you for joining me on my channel where we talk about effective tips and tricks for an enjoyable ministry. I have a couple of fabulous ladies that uh, work for us. One of them have been our core member and uh, she's just started working with us today. The other is a, a new employee of a few weeks now. She is our new um, director for development and she's wonderful. She was saying some things and I was like, that is really helpful. So um, I'm excited about what they have to share with you today. Don't check out before we get to Carrie's Corner. She has some great information that sometimes I don't think about in the grand scheme of things. And then at the end, I'm like, ah, hustling around to get it done. So um, just listen to her tips for, you know, how we're supposed to be doing it each week. And it's going to be great. I am multitasking. The hubs is not here right now. She's so um, <laughs> here we go. Thanks, Jones. Okay, say let's go. Let's go on the road. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Hello, ladies. I am here with Miss Nancy, who actually, this is her first day with us. So uh, we are getting some stuff done, getting things ready for women's <laughs> camp, getting moved into offices. So she decided to help me out and tell me some things that helped her because she just recently went through a move. So, Miss Nancy, what would you say was your most helpful tip while you were moving? What would be my most helpful tip? My most helpful tip would be to have friends help you. I resisted that until almost the very end. And finally, one of my friends just said, would you let me help you? <laughs> and so I did. Yeah. And that was the best thing I could have ever done. And I was very upset that I didn't do it ahead of time. Right. I was needing that yes. warmth and right. that security that it was okay. Yeah. That I wasn't just disappearing to halfway across the country. So I love it. And I know in sometimes in our appointments, we don't have very many friends outside of the army i would encourage you to find friends outside of the army but a lot of times our core people are the best help for us i know our sergeant major in our first appointment drove the truck for us because we had three littles <laughs> um from houston texas all the way to big spring which was uh quite a travel uh in our last appointment we had a great organizer that helped us move she was part of our um, core family she came in she helped organize the core and um, helped us clean in the house. Um, sometimes we get embarrassed or don't want to do that, but really mm -hmm. our people want to help us. Our people mm -hmm. are um, sad that we're leaving and they want to help us through this transition. And I think, like you said, like um, as much as we need it, they need it too, to be able to um, just be together and Well, that reminisce. transition that you're talking yeah. about, that transition, it's a transition for them too. Sure. Yeah. I think it's all about me, but don't we all? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it was for it, it was for them, too. And so yeah. after I first did that, then I was like, okay, and yeah. started calling other friends. Can you come and help? Right. And people want to serve you. And people are saying, hey, call me if you need any help or if you need anything. We had people cook us meals in, uh, in the last one. Now, and I ask y'all, okay, because I'll be like, hey, I know you can cook, girl. Will you make me, you know, will you make my family dinner this night? Mm -hmm. We're going to be really busy. And people just love to reach out and be able to help us uh, in that way. You know, they've they've loved you. They feel you've been kind to them this time. We've helped people through a lot of situations and um, they wanna be able to give back and serve us up to those last minutes. And so having that time together is really mm -hmm. valuable. So when I move from this appointment, are you gonna like come over and help me clean? <laughs> oh yeah, honey, I'm gonna be <laughs> definitely helping you clean. <laughs> You came in today and wanted to go clean out my office right ready. away. Yes. <laughs> so, That's the first thing on my agenda. <laughs> and is there anything that you would not do if, if you were to move again? If I was to move again, I would not. This is going to sound cliche, but I would not wait till the last minute. Yeah. Yeah. You think, oh, you know, I don't have to do that one yet. I've got time. Yeah. 
oh, oh, wait, you know, that that's just huge. I need a whole day. Right, yeah. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah. Go ahead and start. Yeah. Go ahead that's and right. start. Yeah. <laughs> Even if you don't get it all done. Yeah. Go ahead and start. And there's things you have, like a lot of times we want to do like one area, but there's things you have, like officers' councils clothes. You know you're not wearing that between now and then. You know, you can go ahead and yes. get like a few totes done or take your pictures down off the wall. Um, or clean out the guest room that nobody's going to use until then. There's things that you can go ahead and just have them checked off so it's not so overwhelming for you at the end. So, yeah. I Thank agree. You, <laughs> and so here's the thing. Um, make sure that you're asking people. Think about the gifts and talents that your core people have or your neighbors sometimes. Um, my kids know they will find any excuse to run over to Miss Pam's house across the street because I know she's always got cookies. <laughs> um, we know other people's gifts and talents, so take them up on it and say, hey, do you mind helping me in this well, way? Well, I'd like to interject something right yeah. here that I have learned the hard way. Don't rob people of a blessing. Right, yeah. It's a blessing for them to give to you. Yeah. It's a blessing for them to do for you. Right, yeah. And when you turn them down or you don't even ask, yeah, you're robbing them of a blessing. Right, that's because right. Because yeah. I'm sure you're exactly, you're in the service, so yes, you are, think the same way. You yeah. want to do for everybody. You sure. want to do this, you want to do that. So why not, you know, let somebody else get that same blessing that you get right. from doing Why that. not, you know, let somebody else get that same blessing that you get right. from doing for others. There's extra weeks this time. And so some people that I've spoken to is like, it's kind of like throwing off um, their jam a little bit because they're used to having that um, concentrated time where it's just like, go, go, go. But it's gonna come before you know it. So definitely take advantage of these first weeks. Like Carrie said, front load those projects. And then by the end, you have time to really um, help your you know kids adjust and your staff adjust. and things of that nature. Okay, Miss Nancy, thank you so much. We appreciate you. Bye. You wave, Miss Nancy. Oh, bye. bye. <laughs> I didn't know I was supposed to wave. Bye. <laughs> well, nobody ever told me that being married to an academic was similar to being married to somebody in the military or a minister. So we've moved around a lot. And I hate packing up all the stuff in the boxes, especially paper. I hate paper in my regular life, and I hate putting it in boxes and paying somebody to move all the paper with us. So, here are a few hot tips for when you are packing up your stuff and you don't wanna move all the paper. Number one, for all your files, you can pay somebody to scan them and save them, or you can take a stack every day to your job where there's a printer, fax machine, copier, scanner combo. Stick all those pages in the top feeder, scan them, save them, or have them emailed to yourself. So depending on what your scanner settings are, your scanner is either going to save those documents to a folder where you can just drag them from that folder to wherever you wanna save them, or if your scanner is set up to email you the file, and again, just download it and put it in whatever cloud storage you prefer. Now, for those of us who have been around since before digital cameras, we've all got actual photos sitting in boxes or maybe even sitting in albums. And instead of moving with all of these loose photos in shoe boxes, which is probably why you have them, Instead, you can go to scanmyphotos.com. You pay less than $100. You get a box and you can stuff that box as full as you can for that same price. The company scans all the photos, then sends you a downloadable link or a disc, depending on which you prefer. And again, you just download all those files to your cloud storage, your Dropbox, your Google Photos, whatever you use to keep yourself organized. All right, and for all of those art projects that your kids bring home, they're usually in three dimensions. You need a whole box to keep them safe. And where is that box? Under your bed. 
but what are you going to do with them then? So instead of keeping all the things that are on canvas, that have beads, that have glitter, that have feathers and macaroni stuck to them, instead of that, take a photo of your items. Then you upload those photos to Snapfish or whatever digital scrapbook company you prefer. Print those out in a scrapbook and since they're no longer in three dimensions, they're in a nice little book that fits perfectly on your shelf that's only a fraction of the size of that giant tote that's under your bed with all the kids' projects. Hey, welcome to week three of Carrie's Corner, where we're just going over tips and tricks to help you uh, get through this transition this year. Uh, last week, we talked a little about uh, making sure that you get started on your brief, uh, making sure that you start doing purchasing your linens and uh, towels and that kind of thing, those things that your incoming officer will need. This week is just a couple of things. Um, you want to um, make sure, number one, that you start your employee eval evaluations. You wanna make sure that those employee evaluations are done before you leave your appointment so that the officer coming in doesn't, um, first of all, doesn't have to do that, but second of all, it does give them some indication of how your employees are doing and how they can help them uh, and be a support to them. So make sure that those evals are done uh, or at least started this week uh, in your appointments so that uh, those can be out of the way. Also, number two, I would make sure that you know what your farewell plans are gonna be. Start thinking about what, when you want to schedule your farewell. Some of us do farewells on the Sunday after church the last Sunday, um, but some of you may enjoy doing a farewell maybe on a Wednesday night when you can be a little um, more casual. We've done farewells at, and had pool parties before at the local pool. So there are several things that you can do. Uh, number three, if you haven't done it already, definitely get started on your camp paperwork. Make sure that the kids that are from your core that are going to camp, all of that started, whether you're division uses a minicamp or camp doc or whatever they're using, make sure that you get that process started so that the incoming officer doesn't have to worry about tracking down parents. Um, make sure you get your um, camper scheduled for the camps that they're going to attend. I always like to try to coordinate when the officer, when I as the officer am on camp staff, when the kids are going to camp so we're not making multiple trips to camp. Um, now, if you, in the case for us, we have new uh, or a lieutenant following us, uh, so their camp assignment may not be known yet. Uh, so just coordinate with your DYS as soon as those camp assignments are out so that you know uh, when they are going to camp and then you can kind of coordinate when your kids are going to camp as well. I would also uh, start looking through your youth reports know what is going to be due in October. A lot of times we do re-registrations for troops in October. Uh, if there is some sort of evaluation system for your youth programs, your core cadets, um, men's club and women's, all of those things have kind of an annual review around October. So there are forms for those things that you could go on and fill out as completely as you can so that the incoming officer doesn't have to uh, try to scramble around and find out what has happened over the last six months or so. So go on and start filling those out and have those in a bring up file so that your incoming officers will know uh, what has happened. So when they fill out the full reports, and usually those are digital now, they will have something to go off of and they won't have to scramble for that. Um, really, for week three, that's all we need to focus on. You're, wanna, you're gonna wanna start cleaning the rooms that you don't really use that often. Uh, close those off when you're done so that you don't uh, dirty them up again. Um, anything that you're not using right now, especially like your winter gear, hopefully, 
Um, we are done with the winter weather. You can go on and get that uh, squared away and uh, you'll be good to go. So, Hi everybody, this is Landon and this is Captain. <laughs> Uh, so thank you for joining us and um, watching these tips that these ladies have. Let me know if you want to know more about um, what anyone was talking about. Also, don't get overwhelmed. Write those things down on your calendar and make sure that if there's somebody else that knows how to register your kids for camp or um, can do some, some of your brief for you uh, for the areas that they work in, make sure that you are allowing other people to help you carry this load. You do not have to do it all by yourself. And as always, we'll see you next time. Enjoy this crazy calling. Bye.